My name is Nathan Georgiades. I'm the Archivist for Digital Collections at the University of Oregon. And as such was uh, asked on behalf of our department head to sort of do a trial uh, digital exhibit using materials from an exhibit that was on display in the fall of 2017. So I guess I'm here today to tell you a little bit about that exhibit and some of the things uh, that were good and bad about how it all came together, but it really was just sort of a, an initial go at putting up a digital exhibit in Spotlight. So here we are at our digital exhibits um, landing page and we see the sort of the, the card for the word made print exhibit. Um, I used the, the exhibit poster as our sort of thumbnail for the exhibit. I'm realizing that in the future I may have this image uh, resized so it displays um, within the, the area afforded it. But anyway, you get your thumbnail and then you get a brief little blurb about the exhibit and the opportunity to, to visit. Now, all of the materials from the exhibit were, um, well, produced after the exhibit was installed. So everything was imaged sort of in situ uh, as it was on display in our special collections uh, reading room. Um, so there's some good, good things about that and some bad things. Um, but we sort of arrive at the landing page. We see um, our curated features uh, represented with thumbnails on this page. Um, there's a sort of a way to add these into your page display. Uh, I had an odd number of exhibit features, so I sort of popped out this top one and made it a little bigger to sort of um, make the display uh, a little nicer, I guess. Um, so we'll sort of pop over to our first uh, curated feature and proceed through the exhibit. You know, um, pretty basic sort of feature in that we have some text and some accompanying uh, images uh, with caption information. Uh, I sort of tried out all of the different uh, widgets for displaying images. This one is sort of a slideshow that you can manually sort of go back and forth. Um, and, you know, you start to sort of see, um, you know, the limitations, I guess, of uh, photographing something in display as re uh, opposed to, you know, having digital images uh, produced professionally in advance. Um, and that we're looking at a picture that is sort of way uh, larger than it needs to be to display the artifact because it includes the accompanying text, um, all of which is repeated on the page that we're looking at. So in the future, I might take some more care with, with cropping these images. And um, in the future, we expect also to be sort of producing our digital surrogates in advance and possibly downloading them from our, our Oregon digital, uh, digital collections platform. So let me sort of go down to the Lord's Supper. We can click on the image to open up essentially the, the, the uh, exhibit item uh, record. And boy, you have to sort of really zoom in to actually see the, the supper. Um, there it is. So yeah, some sort of limitations, but again, kind of nice that you can do that at all. Um, and then, you know, Lastly, we sort of include a credits page where we can see sort of the full exhibits poster. Um, and this is a, a place where I think we'll implement some guidelines for our department so that our exhibits, the individuals, uh, the collections that are sort of part of it or contribute to it are uniformly or consistently sort of presented. I mean, we're, you know, presenting this as an exhibit that someone might want to see because, well, it's a curated exhibit of uh, items selected from collections uh, to illustrate a theme or topic. 
But I notice on this credits page, we really don't present any sort of the, the qualifications of why you might trust, trust this uh, curatorial um, hand in this digital exhibit. So I'd like to see us as a department sort of approach this with more consistency. And that is essentially the exhibit. We've been thinking further about how we would use our spotlight platform and digital exhibits to highlight, introduce our more fully uh, digital collections as hosted on Oregon Digital, and also sort of point back and forth to potentially uh, a research guide that might, you know, provide a topical sort of research entree to our collections and other collections. Um, so yeah, uh, any questions or observations? Um, yes, this is Kathy from Stanford. Um, that's, this is a great exhibit. Thank you so much for the tour. Um, I have one question I noticed when you were on one of the feature pages, uh, pro pro actually probably on a, a, like an item level display, I saw uh, some kind of a pop-up to the right called tools. And there were options to email, um, message or site, yes. Um, where does this come from? Because uh, this isn't something that um, we seem to have implemented at Stanford. And so I wonder if you could tell me a little bit more about that. No, I really can't. Maybe uh, Franny could. Um, I haven't actually investigated the, the functionality of this uh, toolbox here. Yeah, I'm, Hi, I'm um, not sure. Hi, this is Yen Yu from NLM. I think this comes directly from Black Light. That's so interesting. And I, what, what, ver, uh, Franny, what version um, of, of Spotlight do you have installed? I think we've got the most recent, I, I thought we had the most recent version, but. Um, I'm wondering if somehow, um, my, what I surmise is that um, someone made a decision to suppress this for, for some reason, because this isn't something that I have ever seen before. Um, and it may have to do with the fact that we are using um, our own um, local version of the universal viewer. So rather than the open sea dragon viewer out of the box, which is what you guys are using here. So um, thank you. I'm gonna, I, I would like to look into this because I think, um, I think it would be useful and yet we have crowded pages. So I'm uncertain where um, you know, if we re-enabled this, um, how it would work in the UI. So, thank you. Kathy, I, I do believe that that does come with the standard distribution from the Project Blacklight uh, Spotlight uh, site on GitHub, because we saw it as well in our exhibits and turned it off here because we weren't ready to support it. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it is, it is a, a standard feature, as far as we can tell, from the standard distribution. I love it. I love it how there's always something new to learn. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, uh, nice job, Nathan. That really is nice, and I and I do believe you're correct when you in that uh, creating your digital copies before they go in the cases really will give you much better control over your over your assets um, and your zooming and viewing will, uh, I think that experience will, will will pop up a notch for you. But this is really nice. I, I think this is cool. Thank you. Um, I, I had another um, question slash uh, comment. I wanted to make sure that I um, understood what you said about the credits page. Um, you you indicated that you were going to be um, adding more information there. Can can you just recap that briefly? Sure. In order to, I guess, um, well, we're claiming that these digital exhibits are you know are worthwhile in part because they are curated, selected uh, exhibits, and 
uh, presumably selected by people in the know. So in the future with our credits page, I want to make sure that's um, fully articulated so that people have an understanding of the people and their credentials and the institutions that contributed to an exhibit and also, you know, the items and the collections involved and the people who uh, may have contributed graphic uh, design or what have you. So in an accompanying piece of documentation on our intranet, I've just sort of sketched out some guidelines for special collections in university archives staff when thinking about developing uh, exhibits in terms of how to prepare the materials, um, the nature and scope of the metadata that will be required. Um, and also uh, the, the people who and institutions that should be credited on, on this page. So making sure that our, our special collections in university archives are accredited as a repository uh, in this page for some of the materials in the exhibit. And well, you'd have to really read the, the fine print on the poster to determine that from this page. So in the future, we'll have sort of a list, um, you know, the digital exhibit curator, um, the uh, physical, if there were a physical exhibit, the, the title of that exhibit and the dates it was on display, um, who did the photography work, uh, these sorts of things. Maybe bios or something along those lines, something to, you're talking about credentialing and something to um, kind of indicate to someone who is looking at the site and it's like, is this an authoritative source and how do I know? Um, um, I, I think that's really great and thank you for explaining. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention, of course, you can have multiple about pages if you need them. Let's say you had a grant project, right, and you really wanted to have a special page to um, give credit to IMLS or whoever. Um, but um, one of the other things that we're really trying, trying to do at Stanford with this is use it as a way to recognize um, unrecognized and undervalued labor. Um, and I heard you possibly hinting at that, um, but, but I, I just wanted to put in two cents to encourage you guys to think about if it fits, fits with, with, what, with what you're doing institutionally, that there are hourly staff, contingent labor students that if they're mentioned, um, you know, these are things that they can use for job applications and resumes if, there's, if there are some ways in which they contributed to making that exhibit possible. So um, it's a way that we can give credit where credit is due to silent labor. And that includes metadata folks as well. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's a great sentiment. Yeah, we will put that into our guidelines. Mm -hmm. Wholehearted agreement. Great. Great. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen then if there aren't any, if there are no further questions. And I'm going to stop the recording now. Cool. All right.